Prime Minister Imran Khan on Wednesday reaffirmed his government's commitment to end all forms of polio in Pakistan. In a telephonic conversation with the co-chair of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, PM said the country reported only one case of polio virus this year. He also termed progress against polio virus as good. He expressed gratitude in particular for the BMGF's partnership with Pakistan to eradicate the country of polio. PM Khan reaffirmed that polio eradication remained a pivotal priority for his government and earnest efforts were advancing to further enhance the polio drive across Pakistan. Despite the challenges imposed by the pandemic crisis to achieve a polio-free Pakistan, praising progress towards polio eradication, Gates pledged his continued support to Pakistan's polio program for ensuring that no child in the country was at risk of paralysis due to polio virus. The International Consortium of Investigation Journalists broke the biggest scandal in journalism's history by publishing the Pandora Papers. Pakistan, a section of the media, put forward unfounded allegations against some individuals while many names were kept under wraps. Dr. Faiza Akbar Bol News primetime anchor person said in her program, SNH Chalega. She said in one of her program segments that a number of local news channels and newspapers distorted the ICIJ's report and its facts and played up half-baked information. Around 700 Pakistanis were shown owing offshore companies in the Pandora Papers, but the local media did not share any details about many of them, Dr. Akbar said. Planning Minister Asad Umar announced on Tuesday that the federal cabinet has given a green light for carrying out a fresh census in the country using modern technology. Cabinet gave the approval for holding the census using modern technology and consistent with global best practices, tweeted Umar after attending the cabinet meeting in the capital. The minister shared that the federal government would move a proposal to hold new census in the Council of Common Interests soon. This will be the first time in Pakistan history that census will be held with a gap of only five years, said Umar. Prime Minister Imran Khan, after consultation with close legal aides on Tuesday, agreed to give extension to the incumbent chairman of the National Accountability Bureau just to retire Javed Iqbal till the appointment of his successor, Bold News has learned. In a majority policy shift by Pakistan Tariq and Saab federal government, the PM also agreed to consult with the opposition leader PMLN President Shahbaz Sharif for the appointment of the new NAP chief. Federal Law Minister Farooq Nassim, after attending a high-powered committee meeting chaired by PM Imran Khan regarding the appointment and proposed extension of the incumbent head of the NAP, disclosed that the Premier has agreed to consult the opposition leader on the matter. According to sources, the AGP has played a key role in convincing the Prime Minister to engage the opposition leader in the process of appointing a new chairman NAP. The National Command and Operations Center on Wednesday confirmed that 39 more people lost their lives due to coronavirus in the country during the last 24 hours. According to the NCOC, the department leading Pakistan's campaign against the pandemic, 1,212 new cases were also detected in Pakistan during the same period. Some 46,477 tests were also conducted and the results showed a positivity ratio of 2.60% added the NCOC. Despite a massive vaccination drive underway in Pakistan, currently 3,079 patients are critical in the country. Official data confirmed that more than 87.74 million people have been admitted the coronavirus vaccine so far, whereas on Tuesday, over 1.19 million people were vaccinated across the country. Core commanders have taken serious note of the malicious propaganda by the Indian military and expressed resolve to take all necessary measures to safeguard Pakistan's territorial integrity. The resolution in this regard was expressed during the 244th Core Commanders Conference in Rawalpindi on Tuesday with Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa in the chair. Speaking on the occasion, General Bajwa said, and in an attempt to divert attention from their internal contradictions, especially gross human rights violations, being committed in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. The forum undertook a comprehensive review of evolving security situation in the region. It also focused particularly on border management and internal security, according to an inter-services public relations statement. A group of students in Pakistani capital Islamabad on Tuesday presented flowers and handmade color cards with best wishes to their class teachers to offer heartfelt respects and tributes for ensuring their studies amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Miss, you are very great and we love you all very much because you care a lot about us. You work hard to keep our studies continuing through online classes during the closure of the school which helped us to get high marks. You are my favorite, an excited student told his teacher on World Teacher Day, which fell on Tuesday this year. Anam Iftikhar, a teacher of the 10th grade at the Ghazali School in Islamabad, has been receiving applause from all around for her untiring efforts to avoid the discontinuity of studies for the students. The sudden closure of schools by the government due to the pandemic was unexpected for us. We were worried about handling new situation to ensure minimum damage to children's studies. Finally, we decided, planned and started executing online teaching, Iftikhar told Zinwa. Iftikhar is one of the teachers who did extra hard work for online teachings, as well as the resumption of physical classes at schools by adopting all safety measures against COVID-19. National Accountability Bureau Deputy Chairman Hussain Asghar has reportedly submitted his resignation to President Dr. Arif Alvi. According to sources, the senior retired police officer had sent his resignation to President Alvi on Tuesday. However, sources in NAB and within the presidency did not say anything about the resignation. A NAB official, when contacted, told Bold News that there was no confirmation that Asghar has resigned. He shared the NAB chairman, just to retired Javed Iqbal, has also not received his deputy's resignation yet. Efforts were also made to reach Asghar for his version, but he did not respond until the filing of this report. Three men accused of gang raping a young woman inside the premises Kyle's mausoleum were acquitted by Sessions Court in Karachi on Tuesday. The assistant manager security of the mausoleum, an accountant and a personal assistant to the resident engineer of the Kaide Azam Mazar Management Board were accused of sexually assaulting a young woman in March 2008
estate in the premises of the mausoleum. In May this year, the Sindh High Court had set aside the acquittal of the three men and remanded the case back to a trial court. The court was directed to conduct a fresh trial within three months. Additional district and session judge Ghulam Mustafa Lagari pronounced the verdict he had reserved after seeing the evidence and hearing final arguments. Minister for Planning, Development and Special Initiatives Asad Umar has sought the cooperation of the Asian Development Bank in setting up a risk management unit for the public-private partnership ventures. Talking to the newly appointed ADB Country Director for Pakistan, Yong Yi, who called on him, Umar emphasized for collaboration with the ADB in setting up a natural disaster fund to meet the requirements of disaster risk reduction, mitigation and rehabilitation. Planning Secretary Hamid Yaqub Sheikh and senior officials attended the meeting. During the meeting, the two leaders also discussed the support of the public-private partnership in a viability gap funding and project functioning facility to the private sector too. The exchange rate ended unchanged on Tuesday at the record low against the dollar. The exchange rate ended at 170.80 rupees against the dollar, the same previous day's closing in the interbank foreign exchange market. The rupee has lost 13.26 rupees or 8.42% against the dollar since the closing on June 30, 2021 till reaching the lowest level on October 5, 2021. The dealer said that the dollar demand for import payments remained high. However, measures taken by the State Bank of Pakistan have supported the local currency. A day ago, the State Bank of Pakistan reduced the retention period for exporters for holding foreign exchange from 5 days to 3 days. Although the central bank has taken other measures as well as during the last couple of weeks, those have failed to stop the deterioration in the rupee value. The dealer said the phenomenal growth in import bill was a major concern for the rupee stability in the coming days. The import bill of the country registered a growth of 65% to $18.63 billion during the July-September 2021, compared with $11.28 billion in the corresponding period of the last fiscal year. As the Lord of the Rings trilogy celebrates its 20th anniversary this year, Hollywood star Elijah Wood is revealing previously unknown details about it. Wood took aim at a disgraced producer and convicted rapist Harvey Weinstein, claiming that the monstrous oak costume used in the trilogy was inspired by him as retaliation for rough negotiations on the film. He revealed this during an armchair expert podcast interview with Dax Shepard. It's funny this was recently discussed because Dom Monaghan and Bill Boyd, who played Hobbit's Mary Ann Pippin in the films, have a podcast called The Friendship Onion. They were talking to Sean Austin, who played Samwise, about his first memory of arriving in New Zealand. He'd seen these orc masks before. He'd seen these orc masks before. And as I recall, one of the orc masks was designed to look like Harvey Weinstein as a sort of a fuck you. I think it's safe to talk about it now because the guy is fucking incarcerated. Fuck him, he continued. Ben Affleck, a Hollywood icon, is opening up about his time as Batman and how much he enjoyed reprising the role recently. The actor discussed his role as a Dark Knight in the upcoming film The Flash with Variety, which will be his final appearance as the Cape Crusader. Because the previous experience had been difficult, it was a really nice way to relive that. This was just beautiful. It was a lot of fun, he remarked. His comment to the tough time was a nod to his previous role in 2017's Justice League. When the film was a box office flop, director Joss Whedon was accused of unprofessional behavior by actors Ray Fisher, Jason Momoa and Gal Gadot. Pakistan Cricket Board Director Commercial Babar Hamid has resigned from his position. According to sources, he sent his resignation to the PCB chairman Ramiz Raja, which he is yet to confirm. Sources also said that he was behind the New Zealand DRS mishap. It further added the PCB chairman has ordered an inquiry, but Hamid resigned before it even began. He has not been going to the office for the past few days, according to reports. Hamid was appointed for the position of Director Commercial by former PCB chairman Ahsan Mani in 2019. Central Punjab fast bowler Hassan Ali has been fined for level 1 offence for showing dissent during the match with Southern Punjab on October 3. Hassan showed dissent in the 12th over when the umpire judged his delivery to be wide. He also had a long discussion with the umpire over the decision. Hassan when then charged under Article 2.8 of the PCB Code of Conduct for players and player support personnel, showing dissent at an umpire's decision during a match. The charge was leveled by on-field umpires Saqib Khan and Imtiaz Iqbal. Iftikhar Ahmed, the match referee, requested a sanction which Hassan accepted. Facebook, WhatsApp and Instagram experienced a significant global outage that lasted over six hours late Monday evening. The outage which left billions of people unable to access these apps or send or receive messages prompted users to vent their frustration on Twitter, with many asking why services were down. Following the outage, Facebook and WhatsApp both addressed the problem on Twitter, reassuring customers that they were working to restore services. We are aware that some people are having trouble accessing our apps and products. We're working to get things back to normal as quickly as possible and we apologize for any inconvenience. The outage which occurred around 8.30pm sparked a meme frenzy on Twitter. Facebook said in a statement on Tuesday that a flawed configuration update impacted the company's internal tools and systems, complicating efforts to remedy the issue. While Mark Zuckerberg expressed regret for the disruption, the business stated that no evidence that user data was compromised as a result of this downtime. This is Facebook's second significant outage in a row. The platform's services were offline for over 45 minutes earlier in March. Bowl Briefs ki video sabse pehle dekhne ke liye. Bowl Briefs ke channel ko subscribe kare. Aur bell icon per click karna na bhoolein.